Okay, so now we're continuing through the key at group six. Our first couplet is leaves modified to function as traps for insects, either by means of flat blades covered with long, sticky, glandular tipped or slimy uh, hairs or slimy coating. This is our parasitic plant group. We can go straight to 1B, leaves not modified to function as insect tra traps as described above. If you have reason to believe that this uh, is a parasitic plant, then it would be news to me. I guess it's, it's possible um, that something like that could occur, but that's not what we're looking at here. Uh, flowers tightly clustered in heads or thick conical to ovoid spikes. Uh, you can see some examples of what they're talking about here for 5A uh, and 5B because of uh, the what you can see present in 6A here, where we have the flowers clustered in a tiny little head like that. These are clustered flowers, but they're not in a tight little head. We've got leaves in between the individual flowers. And so we won't say that these are flowers clustered in heads or thick conical spikes surrounded by an envelope of a few uh, bracts. Um, that will be like something in the Asteraceae, which will we'll get to later. So we can go down to 5B, flowers not clustered into involucre heads, or if so, ovary superior and the corolla polypetalous. Um, okay, we'll come back to what polypetalous means um, in a bit. And this is where you'll start to see in the key already, you're starting to see abbreviations that are important uh, to look up in your glossary and your abbreviation key at the very beginning, your index of abbreviations at the beginning. Okay, 9A, leaves opposite. Now, if we just read part of the couplet, we would love this because you look here and we have a beautiful illustration of opposite leaves. Leaves are coming off opposite each other on the stem. That's the case at the top, the bottom, the middle with this plant. It's a beautiful opposite leaved plant, but we have to read the whole couplet, um, especially past a comma. We can't just stop at leaves opposite. And if we read the whole couplet, we see leaves opposite, scale-like and conate, meaning fused, forming a low rim around the stem. Okay, that is not what we're looking at. Um, so that's something like uh, in the Amaranthaceae, and you can see over here, in 9a, an example of what we're talking about there. That is not uh, what we are talking about with this plant. So we can go to 9b and notice it's gonna say a lot of things about how it's not exactly like the above couplet. Leaves not at once opposite, scale-like and conate into a rim around the stem. Stems not succulent and jointed, which is what the rest of that would have said. Flowers showy to minute, rarely in fleshy spikes. Okay, we like that. 10a, plants parasitic or myco-heterotrophic and without visible green color in leaves and stems, generally leafless with mere, merely uh, bract-like um, uh, leaves on stems. We definitely have full-blown leaves here and we have some green. There is some red here too, but there's definitely photosynthetic material. I'm going to guess this is not one of our parasitic plants. And let's go with 10B here, plants with green leaves or greenish stems, although occasionally partially parasitic. Okay, so we don't have to rule out the parasitism thing when we say it's green. Okay, 12A, juice of stems and also of leaves milky or colored, leaves simple and opposite or sepals two to three, which we don't like, flowers funnel form, flowers born in involucre heads, and with an inferior one-celled and one-seeded ovary. Okay, there are a few things we're not gonna like there, but to check the milkiness, of course, you can just break this apart and see if you get milky juice out of the stem. And you'll see we don't have any milky juice coming out of there. So we're gonna say non-milky. Juice of stems and leaves clear, non-milky. Other characters occasionally as above. 
Dried specimens with milky juice in evident may also be keyed here. Okay, 13A and 13B. Leaves whirled generally three or more per node, excluding plants with all leaves with leaves all basal and excluding those with alternate but tightly clustered or bunched leaves. Okay, I don't like that because I only have two leaves here, not three. I wouldn't call them whirled, I'd call them opposite. And the leaves are definitely not all basal. And here I go. 13B leaves alternate, opposite, or all basal, including plants with tightly clustered but alternate leaves, and those with auxiliary fascicles of leaves. Okay, we like that a little bit better because it includes opposite leaves. It doesn't rule them out. 14a, corolla polypet and strongly bilaterally symmetric, generally showy. Now we have a corolla here. Pick up the one that I separated from our plant a little earlier. That is strongly bilaterally symmetrical or otherwise known as zygomorphic. So what that means is that it's face-shaped uh, rather than being um, actinomorphic, like we have here, roundly symmetrical like a wheel, this one's bilaterally symmetrical, more like a, a cross or a face, okay? So polypet also refers to petals that are all separate from each other rather than gamel petalous. This is a gamel petalous corolla where um, all the petals have been fused into one tube. So when we look at that couplet, 14A, corolla polypet and strongly bilaterally symmetric, we like part of it, but not enough of it because it's not polypet. So we have to say corolla polypet, but radially symmetric or, or gamel pet and either radially or bilaterally uh, symmetric or absent. So basically everything else under the sun. So now we go to 15A, perianth, two or four mirrors, apetalous or polypet, stamens generally two, four, six, eight, or occasionally more numerous. We might like this, but it has to be apetalous, meaning the petals are missing, or polypet, meaning polypetalous, meaning that they're all separate. We don't like that, so let's see what 15B has to give us. Fifteen B perianth generally five mirus, or occasionally three, six, or seven mirus, or parts numerous or lacking. Okay, sixteen A leaf blades pinnately, ternately, or palmately divided into compound divisions, extending greater than halfway to the lid to the uh, midrib of the leaf base. We don't like that because in our uh, plant we have leaves that are not divided at all. They're a little toothed at the end, but we would not call them divided. So we have to go to 16B, leaf blades from entire toothed to lobed or hastate, the lobring generally not greater than halfway to the midrib of the base. Okay, then we get to go here. Perianth parts alike, not consisting of two dissimilar sets. What that's saying is that the uh, sepals and the petals are identical or s very similar to one another. That's not the case. We have already looked at our flower and we saw we had a gamel pet corolla and then we had those greenish um, bracts down there for the sepals that we counted as five. So we know that's not true. Perianth is both calyx and corolla, the two dissimilar. Now we just say the corolla is polypet or lacking or the corolla is gamel pet. And what do we have? We have a gamel pet corolla. It's all fused into a tube, much like here. Now we just have to say, is our ovary partially to wholly inferior or is our ovary superior? And what that means is that we have to look inside of our flower and determine if the ovary sits above the other parts of the flower on top of it or if it's buried in a tube or underneath the flower, like this. Uh, here, inferior to superior.
And it just so happens that with this one, I can tell you that we're looking at an, a superior ovary. If we look at it, it's going to look more like that. Okay, so we're going to go with 6K, page 32.